You are welcome to Chapter 3, Technology, Adoption and Diffusion, taken from our main topic, Technology Strategy for Managers and Entrepreneurs. Today's learning objectives identify key factors of different groups of adopters, explain why proportion of the market adopting a new technology product or service at a point in time is typically S-shaped. Define and explain crossing the chasm. Figure out how to cross the chasm. Explain why forecasting demand is difficult but important. Define technology diffusion. Describe the typical diffusion pattern and identify the factors that influence technology diffusion. Understand how information and product diffusion models predict the rate and functional form of diffusion. Use the base model to estimate the rate of diffusion. Use the Delphi method to estimate the rate of diffusion. Explain why complementary technology has a profound effect on technology diffusion. Define and explain technology substitution. And finally, Explain the importance of estimating how long it takes for technology substitution to occur. Distribution of adopters. Normal distribution is the most common pattern of adoption of new products and services. The normal distribution of adopters. Adopter distributions follow an S-shaped curve over time in a consistent approach. Looking at the diagram, we can see on the y-axis towards the left side, we can see the number of adopters in time period. And we can also see on the x-axis right at the bottom, different deviations of innovators starting from 2.5% and it rose to 13.5% and it rose to 34% and it went up and came back again to 34%. And finally, it went down to 16%. So looking at the levels of distribution, we can see that the normal distribution of adapters actually followed the S-shaped curve. Groups of adopters. The first group are the innovators. The innovators are known to adopt new technologies immediately. The second group are the early adopters. They follow the innovators. The third group are the early majority. They adopt new technology just before the average for the market. And the fourth group are the late majority. This group adopts after other customers have adopted the technology successfully. Finally are the laggards group. This group prefer to avoid adoption as long as possible. S-Curves Adoption the S-shaped pattern indicates that there is an acceleration point at which a market takes off by pointing out that different groups of customers adopt new products at different points in time for different reasons, providing information about the right promotional strategy, indicating appropriate pricing strategy, providing estimated demand growth over time, and finally, providing information about the financial attractiveness of a market at different points in time. The Adoption S-Curve The Adoption S-Curve provides a helpful way to break down customers into five segments. Looking at the y-axis on the left side, we can see the percentages move upward from 20 to 40 to 60 and 80. And looking at the x-axis right at the bottom it moves from 0 to 5 to 10 to 15 20 25 30 and 35 time period so traveling from 0 to 10 is classified as low rate of market growth and traveling in time just before 40 percent adopting that is called acceleration market growth and while it travels just before 30 in time and just before 80% adopting is called slowing of market growth. Crossing the chasm. Companies need to sell to the mass market to achieve an adequate return on investment. They also need to segment the early majority of the market and focus on the portion of the majority 
that is undeserved by existing products. Crossing the chasm. Crossing the chasm is the challenge that technology companies face when transitioning from serving early adopters of their products to reaching a broader market of mainstream customers. Looking at the y-axis on the left, we can see the number of adopters in time period. And right at the bottom, we can see time on the x-axis. We can see the innovators started the journey from the lowest time period. They moved from investors to early adopters, but before they can get to early majority, they have to cross the chasm. As we can see, the arrow is pointing to the empty gap. That gap is called the chasm. Every company has to jump this in order to move higher in their businesses. People like Elon Musk and many other successful businesses are taking these risks. So moving from inventors to early adopters, there is no gap to cross. But moving from early adopters to early majority, they have to cross this gap. Many companies have crossed this gap successfully and they were able to move up and got to their late majority and finally they arrived at the laggards. So crossing the chasm is the challenge that technology companies face when transitioning from serving early adopters of their products to reaching a broader market of mainstream customers. Identifying the takeoff stage. These are necessary if there is an accelerated rate change in demand or when the customer base shifts away from the innovators and early adopters. Why crossing the chasm? Crossing the chasm is needed to show how it provides value to customers, it's needed to develop a complete solution to customers' problems, it's also needed to pursue a vertical rather than horizontal marketing strategy. Choosing the customer. Choosing the customer helps to concentrate on a single vertical market by targeting the one that has the greatest need for the new product by estimating the product's value to different markets and the time it takes to play back the cost of the product. Beachhead strategy. The beachhead strategy segments the early majority of the market and focuses on the portion of the majority that is undeserved by existing the products. Demand forecasts. Number one, it determines how much to produce. Number two, Project features costs in businesses based on economies of scale. Number three, it determines the payback on investments in product development. Number four, it makes pricing and advertising decisions. And finally, number five, it determines the competitiveness of the market. Forecasting demand. This is needed to estimate future demand solely based on the current market size depends on the timing of customer adoption, depends on the accuracy of information about factors that influence diffusion patterns. Information diffusion models. The functional form of diffusion is primarily a function of the distribution of innovators and imitators. When there are few innovators and many imitators, diffusion follows an S-shaped pattern how not to do it. The number representing a similar market should not be used as the estimated size of the target market. There may be a substitute for more than one existing product or a complement to one or more products. The base model. The base model is a quantitative method Numerous businesses use to forecast the diffusion of new technology innovations based on the size of the market, the rate of adoption by innovators and imitators, and the proportion of previous adopters. The base model is modified to include a variety of factors that affect the diffusion of new technology products which are most accurate at predicting the diffusion of customer durables. Base model limitations. 
Base model limitations cannot estimate diffusion in the first year of a product's life. Its accuracy of predictions depends on the accuracy of assessments of the size of the potential market. It assumes that the diffusion of a technology product depends only on demand side factors. Its accuracy is much lower when competing technologies are being introduced. And finally, when it's further away in time from the initial adoption point, the accuracy declines. The Delphi Technique The Delphi Technique is an essential tool to use to identify potential technological trends that might impact the development of new products and services. Here we find experts selecting and asking anonymously for their estimates of the likelihood of particular outcomes occurring. We have participants return their estimates to a coordinator for compilation. Finally, summary data outlining the main and range of viewpoints is then returned to the respondents who are asked again for new estimates in light of the information presented by other experts. The Delphi Technique Major Weaknesses Number 1. It is sensitive to the precision of the questions asked. Number 2. Sensitive to variance in the expertise of the respondents. Number 3. Validity of the technique is limited by the intervention of unexpected events that the experts need to incorporate into their analysis. The processes for using the Delphi method. The Delphi method is used to arrive at a group opinion or decision by surveying a panel of experts. Here in the diagram we can see the steps and we can also see the actions. So we have steps number 1 to 10 as well as actions 1 to 10. So for instance, Step 1 says pick a facilitator. Step 2 is to identify an expert group. And step 3 is to create an initial list of criteria. It moves on to step 4, 5 and to the final step where it repeats the ranking process until they achieve stability on the ranking. Product Diffusion Models Below are product characteristics to explain the rate of diffusion. Number 1. The more significant the benefit and the lower its cost, the faster it will diffuse. Number two, the provision of information about a new product and the opportunity to test it enhances the rate of diffusion. Number three, perceived risk of a new product lowers its rates of diffusion. Number four, the characteristics of adopters affect the rate of diffusion. Number five, aspects of the environment affect the rate of diffusion and finally number six social and political factors also affect the diffusion of a new product the importance of complementary technologies new products based on systemic technologies employ ways to make sure that complementary technologies will develop Substitution. Substitution is the achievement of the same objective by replacing one technology for another. It influences the competition between incumbent firms and new entrants. Implementing a substitute plan is challenging because it may be multi-stage, it may face political opposition, it may be racially motivated and its duration process times are not guaranteed. Companies take risks by deliberately developing new products to replace old ones. Time to 90% substitution. The Delphi technique is a consensus-based estimation technique for estimating effort. As we can see on the diagram, we can see on the left side, we can see substitute and towards the right, we can see years to 90% substitution. On the left side, they substituted synthetic for natural rubber at 58 years to 90% substitution. They substituted synthetic for natural fibers at 58 years to 90% substitution. They substituted plastic for natural leather at 57 years to 90% substitution and so on as we can see on the diagram. We have now come to the end of the third chapter. 
Thank you all and see you in the next lecture.